Yeah, man. This is the Preston Hour. Let go. Shalom. Hey, out to the tribe, man. We're back on the search, the seeking, the Hosea 3. To seek a why and conduct we. Hey, man, why, man? Why, man? <laughs> Something about seeking that we, you know, makes things boundless. It opens up the things that were once a limitation, and now you have no boundaries. I mean, now you can pop off in your investigation and be KTC. You know, only, you know, keeping the code only, Hawa only. So it's a pleasure to search for Dawi. You can't do it until you KTC. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm proud of the code keepers that enable this, you know, to really be a 360 Dracon fly pop off perspective that we can share together. And right here in the ether, man. Right here in the ether, man. It's so happening most high over everything. Hey, how my naga five eyes ma. We in that mem sauce. Hey, how my naga yourself a Lego. Hey, how your honor to Hebrew prince, man, keeping his foot on the neck bone of hijack city. Lego, man, we popping off right back in. Prester John, the legend and his sources, crusade text. You know, this is compiled by Keegan Brewer, dropped on us by Aqua Tide Battle and the Battle Family. And, uh, you know, she actually made a PDF for the real noggins that need to enjoy this. So let's belly flop right here in the interpolation E of the Presta John letter. We talked about it many times. We belly flopped through it many times. Let's see where this can take us. You know what I mean? And, uh, Hey, let's pop off. Let's let's talk cavern of dragons, man, and see what see what that cavern takes us. Oh, wow. Also, there is towards the south that region, a certain place of ours at which the world ends, which is called the cavern of dragons. It is long and wide, excessively difficult. And most severe in severity and difficult with the deepness and depth that is most deep and most cavernly, full of secret places. Indeed, in this place, there are infinite thousands of dragons, which the residents of those surrounding provinces guard with the greatest diligence, lest any wizards from India or elsewhere are able to steal one of those dragons. For in fact, the princes of the Indians are accustomed to having dragons at weddings and at other banquets of theirs. And without dragons, they do not consider the banquet to be complete. Just as cattle and mule herders are accustomed to humble and humanize the horses young to teach and tame them and to call them by their own names, to place brittle and saddle on them and to ride them wherever they wish. So to these men who have custody and command of the dragons... The dragon commanders, my naga, humble the same dragon, their incantations and magic. We're talking naga magic. Humanize them, teach them, subdue them, and call them by their own name. Place brittle and saddle on them and ride them whenever and wherever they wish. How did this letter get to all these kingdoms <laughs> through the code? No matter where they were, they got this letter, though. It's... It was translated in over 70 something or 100 and something languages for a year or every year. These dragon people released to our magnificence for tribute 100 men, dragon masters and 100 dragons humanized in this way, which are like cows amongst these men. And when these men play with them admirably by leading them here and there by the head and the tail, the dragons are like dogs. 
Truly, these men with their dragons are our couriers. When it pleases our clemency, desiring to know all the news from every part, we send them with these dragons flying through the air, <laughs> through every climate of the world. <laughs> this is the press to out. Cool. Battle time, man. <laughs> Shout out to Clan Battle. Let's go. Among the other things that occur miraculously in our land is a sandy sea. We're going to get back on that San Banyan River. Sandy sea without water. Indeed, the sand is moved and swells into waves in imitation of every sea and never calm. The sea cannot be crossed by any means, and therefore, it is impossible to know the nature of of the land beyond it <laughs> land beyond it right yeah we're gonna get back on that sand and yeah apparently there's the other tribes or some other tribes are stuck beyond that sandy sea they say you know maybe they're just being preserved by hawa and although it may be entirely devoid of water, nevertheless, they are found by the bank on our side, diverse species of fish. <laughs> no water, but we got fish, man. Most pleasing and tasty to eat, which are seen nowhere else. Three days distant from this sea are certain mountains from which rivers of stones descend. Similarly, without water, and it flows through our land to the sea, it flows for three days out of seven, and a small, large rock slide down, and they drag wood with them to the sandy sea. And after the river enters the sea, the stone and wood vanish and do not reappear on the other side, nor can anyone cross it while it is flowing. A crossing lies open for four days only. Now, remember the... You know, drop we got on the Sandy Sea says that the Sandy Sea runs for six days and rest on the Sabbath. So many of the uh, other ones we got validate the flow that it rests on the Shabbat only. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but let's go. Also, there is, you know, because remember, this is a translation of a translation of a tra You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we still got to dodge the hijack of the want to bring in their Christianity, their Roman Catholicism. They want to put that in the translation. So you already know it's coming. But just get the babies out the bath. Water is what we do. That's all we need is to get the babies out the bath. Water. Also, there is in the plain between the Sandy Sea and the Afrocet Mountains a stone, a stone, my God, of extraordinary power. Having the strength in it, you may say, of incredible medicine. Indeed, it heals only Christians. <laughs> or what? Are we talking about Hawa's children, right? We're talking about you, Israel, right? Hasharah, Lakan Yosef, let's go. Indeed, it heals only the Hebrew or those who desire to become such, who, who want a KTC. This stone has incredible medicine for you. Who are, be, who are being held back by some kind of illness. So those who want to become real Nagas, but they're being held back by some kind of illness in the following way. There is a certain stone that is concave like a copper shell in which there is always water at a depth of four fingers. And it is always guarded by two men of respected sanctity. These men first question those who are coming if they are or wish to become, they say, Christian. <laughs> we say KTC. Do they want to keep the code? Let's go. Then if they desire health in their entire soul, because imagine King David saying this, you know, what would King David care about Christianity? About this JC who's supposed to supplant him as having all this power by the creator and, and returning, you know what I'm saying? Like Jeremiah 30 says, 
David will be raised again, whom I will raise, whom I will raise for you. We're talking the end of days. So how many real ones is being raised up? Well, we know we got a lot. We got a lot of ancestors returning. So, you know what I'm saying? Don't let them supplant, hijack, you know what I'm saying? The real one. Again, Hosea 3 and 5 don't say Israel is going to wake up, return, seek the creator and JC. So we're not talking Christianity. We're talking King Dawi, the Khan, the Rex Negus. So are they questioning him? What do they want to become Christians, you think? I mean, translation, translation, interpolation, C. Or are they saying, hey, man, do you want a KTC? Are you going to keep the code? <laughs> Let's go. Then if they desire health in their entire soul, when they have professed this, after taking off their clothes, they enter the shell. The what? The copper shell. So the copper naga enters the copper shell. Come. And if they have professed truly, the water begins to rise and swell to such a point that it covers them completely so that it raises above their heads. This is another version of a true of what the Christians call today baptism. We know we're talking the living water, water, healing water. We're not talking the oceans and stuff like that. <laughs> we're not talking JC and Christianity. We're talking literally being healed, literally healed. KTC, and we're talking, you know, what I'm saying, uh, waterless rivers, <laughs> stone rivers, sand, sandy, sandy seas with no water, but still, still got tasty fish. You know what I'm saying? So if they are true, right, the water rises, begins to swell to such a point that it covers them completely, so that it rises above their heads. This happens three times, then it gradually decreases and returns to its usual measure in this way whoever had entered rises up and out of the water healthy freed from leprosy or whatever illness was afflicting them like old age next to the desert between uninhabitable mountains a certain stream flows beneath the water or beneath the earth a certain stream flows beneath the earth so these are that underwater rivers that we need to get on to which no entrance can be made unless by an accidental fall. <laughs> oh, man. In order to find the entrance, you know, like you see the movies where they accidentally fall into these holes and then they like, whoa, you know, what place is this? Like that type of shit. <laughs> so no entrance can be made unless by accidental fall. Indeed, sometimes the land is opened up. And if anyone crosses that place at that moment, he can enter or exit with great speed lest the land may perhaps be closed up. So I guess it's like, it's a vortex. It's a vortex. That's, you know, kind of crazy, right? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine sliding through a vortex, man? In real time? <laughs> and whatever grains of sand he grabs are precious stones and precious gems. So while you sliding through, you grabbing up, Stones and gems, man. Precious gems, precious stones. Because the sand and gravel are nothing but precious stones and precious gems. You're talking about a, you're talking about a crystallized earth plane. Crystallized earth plane. That's why when you you know tap into that water beneath, it's so crystallized, man, because it's being crystallized by all these precious stones and precious gems. I mean, let go. And they do not dare to sell them unless they have shown them to our excellent, our excellency, our excellency first. So who, who's the excellency? We're talking about the Preston. And if we wish to keep them in our treasure chamber or for the sake of our power, after paying a fair price, we take them. But if not, they can sell them freely. In that land, boys are also raised in water such that on account of the stones found, they may live for a length of three or four months completely under the water. Boys, man. Which got to take us back to that Chinese trap, you know, with all these Chinese uh, emperors that had whole worlds underneath the water. Somehow they were able to breathe underwater. You know what I'm saying? We're just talking these stones, this magic. It says these boys are raised in water. 
such that on account of the stones found, they may live for a length of three or four months completely underwater. So as they're finding more of these stones, they can live a longer time underwater. Truly beyond the river of stones are the ten tribes of Jews. We're talking about the ten tribes of Israel, huh? Interesting. You know, because they like to flip it today, the ten lost tribes, right? We keep saying, well, oh, they must think that they're Judah. The, the Jewish must think they're Judah and everybody else is just missing. <laughs> or does Hawaii have ten of the tribes across the River of Stones? <laughs> How would we know? You know what I'm saying? And, you know, maybe uh, just a couple of tribes over here getting getting jammed up. <laughs> Who knows, man? Let's go. Who, although they contrive kings for themselves, they are, in fact, our servants and tributaries to our excellency. Why? Why is the press? See, the press is over here, you know, really, you know what I'm saying, taking care of those other tribes. And then there's another 10 tribes that are across the River of Stones that still pay tribute, although they contrive kings for themselves. They are, in fact, our servants and tributaries. To our excellent excellency, another certain province, another certain province next to the dry zone, are worms that are called in our language salamanders. These worms cannot live except in fire. You remember what a worm is? W Y R M. That's a Godzilla, my knife. <laughs> Godzilla is a worm. You dig? Wingless, a wingless, wingless. Dracon. These worms cannot live except in fire, and they make certain little skins around themselves like the other worms which made silk. These little skins are studiously worked by the ladies of our place, and from them we have clothes and garments for our excellencies every use. These garments are not washed except by burning them strongly in fire. So these are, you know what I'm saying... And them dragon wars, you're going to have to have these type of garments on so that you don't get burnt up, man. Our serenity abounds in gold and silver and precious stones. My naga, this is the Preston John letter. 1165, let's go. Our serenity abounds in gold and silver and precious stones, elephants, dromedaries, camels, and dogs. Our gentleness takes in all for foreign guests and pilgrims. Uh-oh, that was the problem. <laughs> The pilgrims came in, man. <laughs> Let's go. There is no poor man among us. Neither thief nor robber is found among us, nor does any sycophant have a place here, and nor is there greed. No division exists among us. Our men abound in all riches. We have small and vile horses. We believe that no one is equal to us in riches or in the number of people. This is Naga in Nagaville, India Superior, is Nagaville and the press is letting you know how it is what's popping what's what's tolerated what's not tolerated in 1165 let's go in addition among the other marvels of our land which seem extremely incredible to men we have five incredibly virtuous stones the size of hazelnuts five stones the size of hazelnuts the nature of the first of these is such that if it is placed beneath the sky in either winter or summer. Listen up. It creates it creates for so much as 10 miles around itself. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Let's back it up. Hey, this is the Preston. Ow. I mean, didn't we ask how this freeze over happened in certain areas that didn't have no ice on it before in certain areas? Is this a way to preserve your land if it's being invaded? Is this a way to is this a way to preserve Tara Sancta?
Only the way. Balawa. We reading the Presser John letter. How many Nagas is sitting back reading the Presser John letter? Huh? How many Nagas popping off with us, my Naga? We just popped off Presser John number 70. We've been doing this for years, man. For years, man. Over half a decade searching for the priest king in the lit in the literature, in the books, in the poetry. Searching through, you know what I'm saying? You know, just trying to find the drop, man. Trying to understand the story. Looking at the maps, trying to understand the story. Allah wa. What it what did we just get in interpolation E, man? So in addition, among the marvels of our land, which seem in Extremely incredible to men. We have five incredibly virtuous stones the size of hazelnuts. The nature of the first of these is such that if it is placed beneath the sky in either winter or summer, it creates for so much as 10 miles around itself such a most bitter cold Bitter cold, bitter cold, Antarctica, bitter cold. How many hazelnut pop off stones did they do? I mean, we're surfing the way. So you place this stone beneath the sky, and then it creates as much as 10 miles around itself of the most bitter cold that accordingly no man or animal can suffer half a day's journey without at once crowding together and dying why, Managa why would you need that stone because we're talking about the land of Preston John Among the other marvels of our land, what land? We're talking Indian Superior, my Nagi. Which seem extremely incredible to men. Maybe, maybe it's extremely incredible. Maybe you can't believe it, but we have five incredibly virtuous stones the size of hazelnut. Sound like infinity stones, man. The nature of the first. So one of these joints, <laughs> one of these joints, what you do, you put it down, bang. Then you got the most bitter code for... As much as 10 miles around. Okay. And no one can suffer through it for even half a day without dying. The nature of the second stone is such that similarly in either winter or summer, it is placed beneath the sky. It creates a great and most fervent heat that no living creature can suffer half a day's journey without being thoroughly consumed and turned to ash like, a, like an atomic bang, right? Damn. So one stone is like a super atomic bang situation. <laughs> the gamma radiation type of flow. A fervent heat that no living creature can suffer half a day's journey without being thoroughly consumed and turned to ashes. The other one makes a severe cold. Okay. Like a stirrup consumed in the kiln of blazing fire. The third stone... All right, is in the middle of the two. It is neither cold nor hot, but it is cold and hot. <laughs> Come on, man. I can't make this up. Who's making this stuff up to you, huh? This is Preston John. Is he tripping? Is he just making stuff up? He's talking about the stones, the elements. Let's go. Now, this third one is neither hot nor cold, but it is cold and hot compared to the other two. It is so tempered that it controls itself and its instability such that its fierceness can in no way harm anyone. The fourth stone. All right, so let's back it up. So it's neither hot nor cold compared to the other two. It is so tempered that it controls itself and its instability such that its fierceness can in no way harm so why would you need this stone maybe you need this stone if you're in a bad temperature place you know the the environment is too hot or the environment's too cold 
He said, man, let me put this stone out. I'll make it paradise for a little bit. I could turn this place into paradise just like that. Boom. That's your third stone. The fourth stone is such that if it is placed beneath the sky at midnight in great darkness, it creates a light of such great brilliance for 10 miles around itself that nothing so small or minute can escape without being able to be seen most clearly. So, okay, that makes sense. You know, you might be on a journey, you know, kind of like an exodus. Following that pillar of fire by night, right? <laughs> Let's go. As though it were midday with the sun shining most brightly. Pillar of fire by night, right? Truly the fifth is such that if it were placed beneath the sky at midday, the sun blazing similarly for 10 miles around itself would make such a pitch black darkness that accordingly no mortal can see anything. Have you ever been in that cold uh, Mississippi type of pitch black, my night? <laughs> Shout out to my Mississippi noggins. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So bliggity black, you ain't going to be able to see nothing. It's just so black. So black. <laughs> pitch black darkness. No mortal can see anything. All right, why would you need that? Maybe somebody's on your trail, you know what I'm saying? Bing bow. They can't see it no more. Nor indeed can he know or perceive where he is. In fact, if these stones are placed beneath the sky, as has been said, they have the aforesaid value, virtues, but truly if they are hidden, they have neither these virtues nor any others. So if you keep them away, it's cool. Once they're exposed, it's popping off. Now, what if they're all exposed at the same damn time? I don't know. <laughs> Let's go. On the contrary, they are so ugly that they seem to have no power whatsoever. So sometimes, you know, maybe you're thinking that you need the shiniest, pearliest stone, whatever. But sometimes it's the ones that are seemingly so ugly. They have no beautiful appearance at all, but they have all the power at all. They seem to have no power whatsoever. <laughs> now, we have another five stones, three of which are consecrated and two of which are not consecrated. All right, let's go. So that's five stones here. Here's another five stones, which brings me to my point. Who knows how many stones are out there, right? Maybe you don't think it's even one, but aren't they walking around some stone in their mecca situation? It seems like they are venerating a stone over there for some reason right and that's a big ass stone or maybe that's a little stone in a big ass box <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but let's go and that's why all our stuff was taken away that's why hosea 3 say that we we spent a lot a lot of time you know without a without a con without a king without without our flow without our things you know what i'm saying because imagine having this Imagine the average Naga having this power right now. What would they do with it? Without being KTC, you would harm yourselves and you would harm others, man. But now that you're KTC, you're like, yo, I can use that to get the tribe free. You know what I'm saying? I can use that to, to pop it off, right? <laughs> for real, for real. Make it extremely hot around this place. Make it extremely cold around this place, man. Now, let's... Let's read about these five stones, three of which are consecrated, two of which are not consecrated. The first of these two is naturally of such virtue that if it is placed in a vase of water, full of water, from that water is, ex is immediately made the whitest milk, the sweetest and most pleasant to eat and drink, indeed better and pleasanter than that of any animal. So you don't want no animal products. This milk is better than that because it's not of any animal. It just tastes like milk and it's sweet. And most pleasant to eat and drink. Con, con. I need that for my cereal, right? Because it ain't from no cow. It's just pure Hawa magic, man. And <laughs> let's go. Truly, if the stone is taken out the water, whatever was there remains. Uh-huh, so it goes back to what it was. The nature of the second stone is such that if it is similarly placed in a vase of water, from that water is immediately made the moist, undiluted wine great fragrant and certainly the most greatly pleasing to drink a better and sweeter wine than is 
that is never found made from the vine or the tree. So Hawaii's looking you up from something above the barrier, man, above the firmament. He's like, man, you're going to taste this type of wine that's not from no vine that you know on earth. <laughs> you're going to have this type of milk that ain't from no animal on earth. Sweeter, better. Hey, man. This is the press the hour, man. <laughs> Let me sip my wine, man. <laughs> Oh wow! 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 Yeah! 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 Let go! Sweeter wine, oh yeah. Better wine, oh yeah. And if the stone is lifted from the water, whatever it was, there remains, it is said, or as was said above about the other stone. The first of the consecrated stones is consecrated such that if it is placed in water in which there is there are fish, as soon as it is placed in the water, all the fish, wherever they were in the water, come as quickly as possible to it. <laughs> it cannot be separated from it for as long as it's in the water. Such is the virtue of the stone's consecration. And then whoever wishes to catch fish may have however many small or large fish he desires. Wow. I mean, you want to feed the tribe? <laughs> Let's go. According to his will, without net and hook and with no other tool and without labor. Truly, when it is brought for from the water, the fish recede wherever they wish. The second stone is consecrated such that if any hunter advancing through the forest drags this stone behind him, tied with dragon sinews. What are we talking about? That that spittle? I mean, <laughs> so, whoa. See how they brought the dragons back into the picture, man? How? How the dragon magic plays, man. How the flow plays, which is Hawaii's magic, because these are Hawaii's creations, kind. Whoa. So the second stone is consecrated such that if any hunter advancing through the forest drags this stone behind him, tied with dragon sinews, accordingly, all beasts, great and small, bears and, and lions, Stags or roe deer, rabbits and foxes, wolves and other beasts, stopping straight away. Follow that hunter wherever he goes, nor are they able to separate themselves from him for as long as he wishes to lead them. Such is the virtue of this stone's consecration, and then whoever wants any of those beasts may catch them without hindrance. Nor is it a strange thing because the animals cannot defend themselves or go anywhere. Truly, when the stone is taken in and freed from the dragon's sinews and concealed in the pocket, the beast goes back wherever they wish. The third stone, hold up, hold up. I just want to look up this sinews and see how they're using it here. I'm just going to go to the 1828 Noah Webster Dictionary. Just type in sinew. Okay, so in anatomy, in anatomy, a tendon, that which unites a muscle to a bone. <laughs> in the plural, strength, or rather that which supplies strength. Money is the sinews of war, or a muscle, or a nerve. So they had some type of tendon, some type of muscle, some type of nerves. From the dragon, my knife. Okay, <laughs> and they, you know, use that sinew, those tendons, to drag this stone. Got it, got it, got it. Let's go. Only the way. How would they have dragon tendons if there are no dragons? I wait. How are they using this dragon magic without the dragon, man? Hey, it's a body bag for the illusion. This is the land of the Preston. 
They're using the dragons in different ways. <laughs> Only way. Nor is it a strange thing because these animals cannot defend themselves or go anywhere. Truly, when the stone is taken in and freed from the dragon's sinews and concealed in the pocket, the beast goes back wherever they wish. The third stone is consecrated in such a way that if it is sprinkled with the hot blood of a lion, such a fire comes out of it that it would thoroughly consume with ease water and stones, earth and other things which are placed opposite of it. It says as though they were candle wick. In parentheses. So this stone, hot blood of a lion, then it thoroughly consumes with ease water. <laughs> so it consumes water, stone, earth, other things which are placed upon or opposite it. Nor can it be extinguished in any fat in any way unless the stone is sprinkled with the hot blood of a dragon. Whoa, whoa. See how they're bringing the dragons in. So the hot blood of a dragon, you know what I'm saying? And that don't mean that you got to slay a dragon. That means like, okay, you know, like they draw blood <laughs> at the doctor or whatever the case is. Oh, here's a prick. Okay, thank you, man. I appreciate that prick because with that, I know I can extinguish this stone once it gets popping off. It's the only way to stop it. You got me? Okay, I got it. Thank you, Phineas. <laughs> thank you, Phineas, for the prick. <laughs> now let's stop this uh, unextinguishable pop offness of this destruction popping off of this stone. So that's the type of stone you need, you know, if you just want to really consume some stuff, you know, really, you know, devour a whole piece of territory or something like that, you know. <laughs> it says such a fire comes out of it that it would thoroughly consume with ease anything, stone, water, earth, other things that are placed opposite of it. So water is not going to stop this thing. It kind of reminds me of that Greek fire they've been talking about in the middle, middle ages, this Greek fire, you know, it, when you spray water on it, it pops off even more, right? So the only way to stop this is with the sprinkling of dragon's blood, not on the, not on the land, but on the stone itself. Unless the stone is sprinkled with the hot blood of a dragon, so you don't need a lot of it, you just need a little bit of it. Hey, free Phoenix, we appreciate you, man. <laughs> In fact, when it pleases our majesty to make such a fire, we have lions and dragons prepared. Whoa, so why would why would the president need to pop off this fire? Unless we're talking about being at war, right? So what happened between Genghis Khan and, and President John? I mean, how did such devastation, you know what I'm saying, pop off? What happened with Atlantis and Mu? Now, when they want to pop it off, because it, it takes the hot blood of a lion to start it and the hot blood of a dragon to stop it on the stone. Like your hot to men breaking down. This is our this is clearly magic, right? <laughs> but this is your, you know, natural by law, you know what I'm saying? Ibaru, you know, priest con India superior frequency. Our issue was putting our frequency before the source of our frequency. We had such powers that we forgot the source of the power. You know what I'm saying? We thought we just had it. It's going to keep going. Yada, yada, yada. We were wrong, my name. We were wrong. You, you always need to KTC. You got to come back to your source. So we have lions and dragons. If there's no dragons, why are there dragons here? If, if dragons are myth, then lions got to be a myth, right? Because they got lions and dragons. Prepared by whose blood the fire is indeed kindled and extinguished. Of course, we burn up our enemies with such fire if any ever appear to us. Whoa, we in battle time. For the dismount. When we proceed to war against our enemies in place of flags, we make to be carried before us in separate carts 13 great and accept exceptionally tall crosses or towels made from gold and precious stones and following each one of them are 10,000 knights what swan knights let's go 100,000 armored foot soldiers are we in battle time Anaga? is it is it that time 
Why do you seek Hawa and King David? Who's going to come with the 100,000 armed foot soldiers? <laughs> Who's going to come with the Dracons? Beside the others who have been assigned to baggage. And remember, you just need a couple of dragons <laughs> to set the record straight. And that's what they're trying to prepare for. They don't even know. They don't even know, man. These are upgrades, man. They don't even know. These are upgrades, man. Let's go. Beside the others who have been assigned to baggage, chariots, and carrying the army's provisions, truly, when we ride out normally, a wooden cross goes before our majesty. Now, dodge your own damn hijack. You already know they're going to try to come with their Christianity, man. <laughs> Decorated with no paint or gold or gems so that we may always be mindful of the passion of the Lord. JC. Okay. Or is it being, you know, mindful of something else to have this one have no goal? What's it got to do with Joshua? Who, who wore a robe filled with crosses, according to Gerald Massa in the book of the beginning, Joshua or Kitsukooto wore a robe filled with crosses. Kitsukooto led his people to the promised land. What's it got to do with Kitsuko? Tapu Z. Let's go. And one golden vase full of earth so that we may recognize that our flesh may be returned to its origin, that is the earth, and another silver vase full of gold is carried before us so that everyone knows that we are Lord of Lords. Our magnificence abounds and excels in all riches that are in the world. Among us, no one lies. No one is, is able to lie. And if someone begins to lie there, he immediately dies. <laughs> no lies. That is, among us, he is considered to be a dead man. Nor is mention made of him among us. That is, he receives no further honor among us. A lot of times people want to come around you and want, they want to get honor, but they, but they come in a hijacked frequency. They come bearing false witness. They come with the static. And as much as we want to, you know, love and honor our brothers and sisters, it's impossible to honor those that are, you know, choosing to bring anything against Hawaii's code. Whether it's a power, whether it's a covetousness, whether it's bearing false witness, we can't honor that, my naga. It's not, we don't love you, we just can't honor that frequency. See? This goes back a long way. He immediately dies. That is, he is considered to be a dead man because no mention is made of him among us. That is, he receives no further honor among us. We all follow truth and love each other. There is no adulterer among us. No vice reigns among us. This is the land of the pressed, and this is the Preston Hour. Wow! Dawa da! Shalawam to the tribe, Ahab to the Khans, to the entire Khan dynasty, popping off this search for the KTC, for the code of, a, of our creator, our one and only savior, Hawa. And through that, how does Hawa save us, man? He sends us on an investigation to connect to the Preston, to King David, the David that he will raise again so that we can connect to that which is boundless and infinite. The true vortexes, the true protection, the dragons on the wall, freak feedings, my naga, shalawa.
Yeah, man.